Let's talk for a few minutes about the properties of logs. Even though we've defined logarithm in a different way from what you saw in college algebra, everything that was true about logarithms with that definition is also true here. Let me remind you some of the most important properties. First of all, natural log of 1 is 0, and natural log of e is 1. And you might remember that e is the number which is approximately 2.7. A third property is that natural log of e to the x is x. In other words, the exponential and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other. And another way of saying that is that natural log of x is equal to c if and only if e to the c is x. So this gives us a way of switching back and forth between uh, logarithmic form and exponential form. And then we have the properties of logarithms, which allow us to expand and contract logarithms. And those are the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. The product rule says that log of a product is the sum of the logarithms. The quotient rule says that log of a quotient is the difference of the logarithms. And the power rule says that natural log of a to the p power is the same as p log a. In other words, you can take that exponent and bring it down as a coefficient. Now, it turns out that you can uh, often carry out derivatives in a much easier way if you use these properties of logarithms to expand the log before taking the derivative. So let me give you some examples of that. These are, again, pro problems from the textbook. First of all, let's look at problem number 52. Here we want to take the function y equals natural log of t times t plus 3 cubed and find its derivative. So the great idea is to expand it first and then take the derivative. So first of all, let's apply the product rule. Log of t multiplied by t plus 3 cubed will be the same as natural log of t plus natural log of t plus 3 cubed. So in this first formula, I'm letting a represent t, and I'm letting b represent t plus 3 cubed. Then I can apply the power rule to the second term and bring this exponent 3 down as a coefficient of the logarithm. So the original function is equivalent to this function. And now, let's take the derivative. The derivative of y with respect to t will be the derivative of log t, which is 1 over t, plus 3 times the derivative of t plus, log of t plus 3, which is 1 over t plus 3, times the derivative of t plus 3, which is 1. In other words, I get 1 over t, plus 3 over t plus 3. And that's way easier than differentiating this original function using the chain rule. Another example would be problem number 54. We're given the function f of x equals natural log of 2x over x plus 3, and we're asked to find its derivative. So first of all, let's rewrite f using the quotient rule by saying it's the same as natural log of the numerator, 2x, minus natural log of the denominator, x plus 3. And then let's take the derivative term by term. Remember the derivative of log of u is u prime over u. So the derivative of two, log of 2x, I put the 2x in the denominator, and then I put the derivative of 2x in the numerator, so u prime over u, minus the derivative of log of x plus 3 is 1 over x plus 3, times the derivative of x plus 3, which is 1. And I'm pretty much done. I'll just cancel the twos in the first fraction.
So 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 3. I think maybe with one more example, we'll have the hang of this. This is number 51. Here y is equal to natural log of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. So first, let's expand this using the product rule. I have natural log of a times b. This will be natural log of a plus natural log of b. Now over here in the second term, natural log of the square root of x squared minus 1, I can write that square root by using the 1 half exponent. And then I can apply the power rule over here to say that this is 1 half natural log of x squared minus 1. And now I think that we're ready to take derivatives. So the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of log of x, which is 1 over x, plus a half times the derivative of log of x squared minus 1. So the derivative of log of u is u prime over u. So I put u in the denominator, and I put its derivative in the numerator. And the derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. I can simplify again by canceling 2s. And that gives me 1 over x plus x over x squared minus 1. 